Welcome to an overview of D2L. To reach D2L, there are several ways that you can do that. I prefer to go directly to that by typing in the web address of learn.radford.edu. You can also reach Desire to Learn by going into the MyRU portal and finding a link there that takes you to D2L. To enter D2L, use your Radford username and your Radford password. You'll see as I enter D2L, because I've taught for a number of years, I have multiple options for my courses. Hopefully yours are much more limited, but you'll see as you scroll through those, they'll be in order of fall, and then they move into spring, and then summer. What we're looking for will be your course for the current semester that you're enrolled in. For my demonstration today, I'm going to select the course from fall 2013, and you'll see my two courses for fall 2013. Again, this may be a different semester, but basically you'll be looking for the appropriate semester and the appropriate course that you might be looking for. So I'm going to select this course today for our demonstration purposes. As you can see, this course comes up and you begin to see all the materials and options available for the course. In this particular case, I'm in the instructor role, and I'm going to leave it there so that you can see most of the items available within D2L. On the right-hand side, if your instructor has chosen, you'll see calendar dates for different things that they've marked for you. As you also scroll up and down, you'll see the content browser. To me, this is one of the most important pieces that you will use for your course so that you can see how it's laid out without being overwhelmed by the content view that appears once you go inside of a folder. Let me move to the top toolbar row and you'll see content. That's what I just mentioned. This opens the course up so that you see the entire outline of what the course looks like. It starts with an index approach on the left side, and you can see that there are modules here. And as you click on those, they begin to open up as well. Now you see in the center of the screen each of the units inside of that particular module. Again, you're welcome to follow your course in whatever manner you choose, but for me, as I return to the home page by clicking on the very top toolbar and the name of my course, I believe the better preference for following your course is using the content browser, as the content browser gets you back to the beginning of each of the modules. You can see in this course it has a module on introductory materials, it has a module for the course syllabus, it has a module for the course resources, it has a module for the university resources. And then finally, it has a module for all of the chapter assignments. This particular course by this instructor uses a chapter by chapter approach. Sometimes a professor will use a unit approach where these will be different units. But again, the niceness of using the content browser is that everything is summarized and put together in a much more organized fashion. As I click on this first module, you can see that it doesn't take me directly into each of them, but it shows me an overview so that I know in this module that we clicked on, we start here, here are all of the items that are part of this Read Me First Start Here module. Many professors may call this introductory, introductory comments, different titles. Now that we've viewed and we see what all is in there. We can click on any one of the items or we can click on home and return back to the summarized version of those materials. And as you move into the course at any point you want to return to this home screen, simply go to this very top line and click on this button to return you there. 
you'll see that this will start to create a breadcrumb, breadcrumb line of reviews. So let's click again on the start here. And let's click now on that particular document. All I need to do to get back to the very beginning of the course, you can see the breadcrumbs that are now being initiated from this course. We've now moved to the table of contents, to the start here module, and to the start here document. Again, this is like your home button would be on a website, and it begins to create for you the breadcrumb trails here of how far and where you are inside of the module. Clicking on this will return me back to the home page again. I can scroll back down now and look. I'm on that first module, and I can very easily click on that now, and I'm back to the home. And again, each instructor will share with you their methodology for how this is arranged. As we look back across at the toolbars for you, you can see content, which I briefly showed you, Dropbox, which in D2L is the list of assignments. In my courses, I embed the assignments in each of the modules that they are necessary and required for. But this also gives you an easy place to check to see where you are. Again, my recommendation, particularly for my courses, is that you follow the modules as displayed here, because my assignments are all embedded in there as well. Again, each instructor may have their own preference in terms of how they do it. Returning to home here, and we're still on the home page of the D2L course for this particular course. Discussions is the next tab. This tab is like a threaded discussion that you might have in a blog or some other application. And again, when you click on Discussions, you'll begin to see each of those. Here are the discussions that you see for my class. And again, each instructor does it in a very different way. But that is Discussions. I want to return back home. And here we are. Let me just briefly display the Dropbox, although it's not my preference. This gives you a list of all of the assignments listed that are submitted assignments. You can see that for this particular course, all the assignments are open. And you can find the due dates if they're not put in a calendar format for you under the due date here. You can see in this particular course, there are some due dates early on. And my preference in my courses is to post all assignments so students have the availability to look at those and see where they are in terms of their work. To open an assignment, you simply click on that assignment. Yours will look a little different, but you'll find in the assignment an option to see what's there. And I'll return to the home page shortly and do it in a student mode uh, to see if you're able to see those assignments. But basically what I prefer is that you reach this page by going directly to the modules where I've embedded those and we'll demonstrate that shortly. But again, if you want to get a feel for what assignments are open and available, you can certainly do that by going into Dropbox. I want to return home again. I'll go to this very top button, bring me back home. And we've talked thus far about the content display of materials, the assignments through Dropbox, the assignments or threaded discussions available here. Class list will show you the list of students in your section. And you will see their email address. I strongly encourage you to not use this as a way to email individuals because it's a closed system. But you can see your classmates email address here. And by adding at radford.edu and then use that in your regular email system. Again, I do not recommend using this class list as a way to 
email individuals because it is closed system and does not go directly into your email. Even when you mark it to do so, it continues to bounce for several weeks when someone tries to respond to it. So again, the class list will let you see the students who are in your section of the class. On my roster, it lets me see everybody in both or all sections. But for you, you'll simply see your students in your section. I'll be glad to post at a later date when the class is finalized a list for those of you who are in my classes so that you have a complete list of everybody. But inside of D2L, for you as a student, when you click on class list, it's simply going to show you your section members. All right, I'm going to return again to the home page of D2L. We've now looked at content, Dropbox, discussions, class list, groups. Groups is something your instructor may or may not use. I'll instruct students in my class directly on what that what's required for you in my courses. But this is where groups are created for the purpose of submitting assignments in D2L. Quizzes are exactly what it says. Again, for my classes, those quizzes will be embedded in each of the module assignments. But you can see for this course, all of the quizzes that are available and the dates that they are available. And again, to take quizzes, you'll simply click on the quiz and it will give you the option of starting with that quiz. The other buttons that you see here you probably will not be using unless further instructed by your professor, but these are the major functioning buttons, content, Dropbox, discussions, class lists, groups that may or may not be used in your course, quizzes, and then grades is another button that will be useful for you. You can see on my screen that I have a list of everybody's grades. Obviously that won't occur when you click on grades. When you click on grades it will show you your grades and your feedback. I'm going to return again to the home page of the course. Review briefly. Content shows you an expanded view of everything in your course. Dropbox is where you can look at all of the assignments in the course. Discussions is where you would look at all the discussions available for your course. Class list shows you the list of students in your section. Groups is something that is developed for group assignments that your instructor may or may not use. I will use those and provide instruction for those in the orientation section for any of my classes at any point. Quizzes again, these are simple quizzes. They have multiple formats that can be used. But they'll be explained as you open them. Grades is where you see what has been graded out of your Dropbox assignments. This has been a brief overview of the functions of D2L. Again, my recommendation to you is to follow the content browser as you begin working in your courses. I'll show you briefly in my format how a module looks and what you might expect to see. For example, in Chapter 1 I have three major headings. I have content information, I have a quiz, and I have an assignment. So if we click on content information, you'll see that you have a link to iTunes for my comments. You have a prior class's outline of that chapter in a PowerPoint, and you have a crosswalk document from a prior class. Every instructor will arrange their content browser in, a, in different ways. This is the format of mine. So when I return to the chapter one module, you can see that I demonstrated content. You'll see here is assessment. This is basically a quiz on that material. Returning back to this first chapter, you also have an assignment. And here is that assignment for that chapter one. Now, if you remember, when I demonstrated for you the Dropbox, here is that same assignment in the Dropbox.
So I'm returning back to the home page. Just remember each instructor may format it a bit differently. Each semester may be a bit different, but this gives you a brief overview on the use of D2L. And again, I've returned to the home of a content browser where all of my modules are summarized. If I can help you with D2L, please feel free to drop me an email at rmccracke at radford.edu.